find a better fit if you had it custom built. I'm not a bit off the price. No, no, thank you. No, no thank you. Another blank. I'm going to have to reduce that car. Reduce it? Well, how much? Two owners and at least 10,000 miles. Hey, get out my chair. Things are getting desperate. Don't worry, Arthur. I'm sure Sonic will turn up. You better hope it does. If things stay the way they are, I'm going to have to exercise a certain amount of wage restraint. Well, I don't remember a time when you weren't restraining me wages. I resent that remark. I've made all sorts of sacrifices to keep your wages up to par. Even cut down on me lardies. All right, all right. It was only a joke, Arthur. In very poor taste. If you're short of the folding, stop chasing after every skirt in the metropolis. Pull your horns in. Right, Arthur. Oh, come on. I need a pick-me-up. Let's go down to Winchester. And if anybody asks, we're doing better than average in the sale. Confidence is paramount with Joe Public in this business. Yes, Arthur. Do you hear me? Yes, Arthur. Oh, come on. Lock the door. Oh, Dave. Right. Right, Dave. Yeah, how's business? Oh, we've had a blinding week, Dave. Oh, great, great. Oh, if I can settle with slate, then. Thank you very much. Ignore the boy, Dave. Lad's always been prone to exaggeration. Give him a fizzy water to calm him down. I'll have the usual. All right, Arthur. Vic. What are you up to? Listen, that. How's the pub going, Vic? Get in there. When you take over a boozer, it takes a while to knock it into shape. Well, the Hat and Feathers was a popular house when old Ernie had it. Oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong, Dave. I'm just after something more, uh Flash? High profile. <laughs> Yo, Vic. Yeah, all right, babe. Don't worry. I'm on my way. I'll be there in five. Sorry, chaps. I'm going to have to love you and leave you. Bloody barmaids don't know their Heineken from their elbows. Catch you later, boys. See you, Vic. Think about what I said, Dave. Right, yeah. Right. All right, Cagney. How are they hanging? <laughs> he's much too familiar for a bloke who's only been on the manor for five minutes. And he's nosy and all. What do you mean, think about what I said? I oh, just that we were at a licensed victualler's do, and someone reminded me that next month it's 25 years since I took over to Winchester. Yeah, that's brilliant, Dave. Do you have no do? Well, that's what Vic reckons, but I don't want to make a fuss. All right, Danny. He does indeed work in mysterious ways. Who, oh, Dave? Of course you'll have your do, Dave. If you was in China, you'd be a public hero and they'd stick your boat on a stamp. <laughs> Thanks very much. You have created a rare retreat from the ravages of life here. Hundreds of your punters, past and present, would feel cheated if they were not allowed to celebrate your achievement by buying the odd lager or four, and perhaps the odd commemorative mug. You had me fooled there for a moment, Arthur. I thought you was being sentimental. When opportunity knocks, Dave, you've got to grab it with both hands. We can knock out all sorts of memorabilia. T-shirts, key rings. I don't believe it. This is the happiest I've seen you in weeks. Raymond, I am an entrepreneur. When I'm starved of business opportunities, I'm, I'm like a young royal with no holiday to go to. Well, I'm off. I want you at the lock-up, 9am sharp tomorrow morning. Dave, don't fret. As your partner, I will organise the entire party. Oh, I'm definitely going to have one, then. You most certainly are. I'll have a look in the diary, and I'll tell you what date it'll be. Thanks very much. That would be nice. Look, Arthur, are you sure this is a good idea? Have a bit of respect, Ray. The man's done his time. Anyway, I'm told he's fully qualified now. Yeah, in breaking an entry. I don't go on, Ray. You sound like early doors. Good morning, my dear. Is Art attacking? Hold on. There's two blokes at the door for you. Who are they? I don't know. One of them looks like a chipping day. Hello, heart attack. Arthur! It's Arthur Daly, a silly tart. I'm sorry about that, Arthur. Here, come in, mate. Yeah, you better wait outside. Keep an eye on the motor. Ooh. Let's talk through here, Arthur. Oh, right. Makes a cup of tea, Angie. 
<coughs> Not me, thank you. Oh, what a nice view. I, um, I hear you're putting it about that you're a painter and decorator. Yeah, got me full city and girls. Part one building and all. Want to see me certificates? No, no, that won't be necessary. Mind you, he ain't got a job yet. Who trust a bloke with his record on their premises? But I'm straight now, Arthur, honest. Never gonna do over another gaff. Unless it's with me rag roller. <laughs> well, knowing your propensity for collapsing at the sound of a burglar alarm, I think that's very wise. No, no, the thing is, I've come here to put your foot on the ladder. It's Dave's 25th anniversary at the Winchester, and we're laying on a do, and I want to have the place done up. Decorate the Winchester? Would be an honour. Well, seeing as I'm doing you a right favour by putting this prestigious job in your way, I hope that will be reflected in your feed. Oh, yeah. You get full discount when they're giving me quotes. No, 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 Art Attack. Shakespeare gave quotes. I want from you a firm, fixed price. 250 plus materials, and I want all receipts. 250 It's a lot of work there, Arthur. All right, 275 Take it or leave it. Yeah, all right. Well, look, I've got to do some business. I'll see you at the Winchester in about an hour to discuss colour schemes. All right? Oh, one other thing, Art Attack. You are fully fit, aren't you? I mean, I can't afford medical insurance. Oh, yeah. Since the bypass, the doctor says I'm A1. Winchester phase two off the ground. I think you'll find this is just the wine you want for Dave's 25th. I didn't know the Ugandans made wine. Are you not joining us, Harry? Bit too early for me, Arthur. Who? Interesting bouquet, isn't it? Ooh. You're not going to taste it? Uh, no, no, but it's just what I'm looking for. Uh, shall we say eight quid, including delivery? Eight quid a bottle. Eight quid a case. And you'll change the labels to read um, uh, Chateau Winchester. No, 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 that's silly. Uh, souvenir wine from the Winchester Club. Arthur, you can't expect people to drink this rubbish. Mark, who's talking? Him whose mates can't drink a bottle of beer without banging a lump of lemon up his neck. It's for commemorative purposes. People will probably buy it to lay down. Arthur, I won't be able to fit souvenir wine from the Winchester Club on the labels. Oh, we'll use some abbreviation. Instead of Winchester Club, just use the initials. All right? Come on. Right, Ray? Here, yeah, I hope he knows what he's doing. The man assures me he's fully qualified. I don't think this place needs doing up. Oh, come on, Dave. Think of the punters. It's had less decoration than the Italian army. Your 25th should be the dawn of a new age for the Winchester. We've got to aim to attract the upmarket lot, you know, the, the Roller and Camelier Coat Brigade. Yeah, but what about the cost? Oh, that's all down to me, Dave. I'll, uh, I'll take the grand and materials that Art Attack's charging me out of the money I owe you for my share in the business. How you doing, Art Attack? When you expect him to surprise you, he don't. I think I can work wonders here, Arthur. I want to give the place the full Monty. I was thinking of an oriental theme. We could have this wall down and put in a mock pagoda. Then, over here, I could build an alcove and put up hanging lanterns. Then I'll cover everything with Japanese grass paper. You look like a takeaway. Here, hang about. I'm talking now a senior partner. Redecoration, you said. I don't want the place rebuilt. I mean it, Arthur. All right, Dave, all right, all right. Art attack. Perhaps the uh, creative juices are flowing a little too freely. Bung a bit of anaglypta up and stick some paint on it. And look, knock that wall down for Dave in the storeroom. That'll give him more storage space. All right, you're the governor. That's what you want. I never agreed to no wall coming down. Well, it makes sense, Dave. If we're going to increase our clientele base, we're going to need more room. Trust me. Dave! Sorry, it'd be a pain. Right out of tonics. Couldn't lend us a crate, could you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> no problem. Come along, Raymond. I've suddenly remembered an important engagement. All right, boys. Vic. Vic. How long's he been coming in here? Oh, 
Vic. Oh, he's taken over the out and feathers round the corner. I thought it a nice touch, putting vintage on the label. Oh, that is a lovely job, Harry. Hey, Ray, this memorabilia lot may be bigger than I anticipated. I may have to take on extra staff. Oh, that's good to hear, Arthur. When's he arriving? Yeah, look, when you finish that, get some of that old car paint and slap 25 years on these. Oh, so much for the extra staff. What do you think of that, Harry? A bit thin, Arthur. Yeah, the stitching falls apart when you put it over your head. Got one for me birthday last year. They are meant to be souvenirs. They're not supposed to be worn. Arthur, the T-shirts can't be worn, the wine can't be drunk. You're going to end up getting lynched. Here is the piece of resistance, Harry. The Winchester club tie. No, 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 it's a great tradition. British club ties are meant to look like a road accident. I mean, look at that thing the MCC lot wear. Oh, that is lovely. See you, Ken. Bye. Genius, that's the only word for it. You couldn't get better if you had Michelangelo on the end of the brush. Well, I must admit, it is going down well with the regulars. Of course it is, Dave. It gives the old place a bit of style. Arthur's right, Dave. That's the trouble with most publicans. They've got absolutely no style. How oh, true that is, Vic. Let's have a look at the storeroom, shall we? Oh, yes. There's much more space now that wall's gone. Perhaps we should think of turning it into a pool room, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> what do you suggest I do with my stock? Details, Dave, details. You've got to start looking at the bigger picture. Where's Art Attack? I don't know. He must have just shot off. Modestly. Quality shared by all the very best interior decorators. Why has he painted this bit white? That is what we call tonal modulation. Well, let me know if I get too technical for you. Hey, what are all these cracks? It looks a bit iffy to me. Don't you have a pub to run? Yeah, well, I asked Art Attack about that, and he reckoned it was shrinkage. Well, there you are, then. Where's Alan? As far as I knew, he's doing up your club. And he packed his bag and done a runner. And you don't know where he's gone? No idea. Well, if he turns up, tell him Arthur Daly wants a word. He don't mind risking his art working. Any other sort of exertion he don't want to know. Don't fancy a cup of tea, do you? No, thanks. Well, Vic reckons that all that is subsidence. Uh, what does he know? Quite a bit, I'd say. Who knocked down that wall in the storeroom? Our interior designer. He's fully qualified. Hmm, I'd like you to give me his name. Why? Do you want to use him? No. I want to warn our other clients to avoid him. That wall he's demolished was part of a load-bearing wall. He should have replaced it with an RSJ. I knew it was a mistake listening to you. Well, put a, an RS whatever it is in now. It's too late, I'm afraid. I'll have to do a detailed survey to confirm it, but I'm more or less certain that these cracks have been caused by undue pressure on the foundations, causing them to shift. It's all going to need underpinning. <laughs> How much is that lot going to cost? Give or take a couple of hundred... thirty thousand pounds, I'd say. That'd be great. Well, don't just stand there making a crisis out of a crisis. Get the insurance check. I'm sorry, but you knocking that wall down violated the terms of your policy. Your insurance is invalid. And until the work's done, this is a dangerous structure. I'm going to have to recommend to the council that the Winchester's shut. This is a poignant moment. We weathered recessions, Winter of discontent, three-day week. But never in all that time have the welcoming portals of the Winchester been closed. I tell you what, Art Attack better stay in hiding if he knows what's good for him. Right now, he's the second most hated man on the manor. Who was the first? Well, who'd you think, Arthur? Not me? I engaged that man in all good faith. Well, the landlord has given us a week. If we ain't come up with 30 grand, he's gonna sue us for the cost of repairs, plus the loss of revenue for not being able to rent out a place. Oh, my God. Well, just remember, I'm a minor shareholder. But major blame holder. Now, listen, Arthur. If you don't come up with that money within a week, the Winchester Club's gonna be shut for good, and that'll be my living down a pan. Yeah, all right, Dave, all right. Rest assured, I will do everything in my power to get this sorted. Now, let's just go and sit down and talk about it calmly and quietly over a drink. Oh. Where'd you suggest we go then, Arthur? 
Vix. I reckon that a pin truck will come up with about seven grand. Well, Arthur. Well, at a stretch, I suppose I could probably match that. You must be able to do better than that, Arthur. That hardly covers what you owe me. Times are hard. This anniversary was supposed to be my salvation, remember? Well, you could liquidise some of your assets. Well, Frankie Miller said he'd give you five grand for those two motors. That's a grand less than what I paid for them. Remember what Mr McCorber said. Flog something for less than you paid for it, and you'll soon be up to Swanee without a paddle. Thanks a bunch, Arthur. It's not fair, everyone having a pop at me. But Arthur, you just promised to move heaven and earth, and now you won't move a couple of capris. All right, all right, I'll unload the cars and I'll let you have the five grand. But that's a lot. I'm cleaned up. Yeah, it's still leave us 11 grand short. Dear Arthur, what about your secret offshore account? <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me, miss. Why do they keep ignoring me? Well, I don't think they know how important you are here, Arthur. These bits of girls have got no business behind the bar. They lack your maturity, Dave. What can I get you, Ray? Oh, large VAT, please. I beg your pardon? A large no, VAT. That's all right, Sandra, it's with me. Um, <laughs> I'll have a large vodka and tonic and a couple of bars of lager. And can you do something about this music? They'll ban all music in pubs. Yeah, we don't want people start enjoying themselves, do we, Arthur? Shams. What can I say? You must be double gutty. I know I am. Right, okay, you wait. Listen, you're not comfortable here. There's a function room upstairs you can use. Some of your regulars there already. I'll show you. No, oh, all right. Keep a dizzy of it. That's 420, please. Uh, I'll get these, shall I? Yeah, good lad. We'll see you upstairs. Yeah, have one yourself, son. Oh, thanks. Well, that's who I thought it was. Well, unless you're from the Inland River, you, yeah. So my dad a telly a couple of months back. Sorry about that. No, it works fine. Dad reckons it's a bargain. A satisfied customer. We ought to have him stuffed. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, it looks like we might be using this as our logo for a little while. That's nice. So we'll be seeing a lot more of each other. You don't need to ask. I think I just might. You might interrupt seeing anything, am I? Uh, no, Gloria. I was just uh, telling... Well, you know Sandra, didn't you? Hello, Sandra. Yeah, I was just telling her that uh, a good job that uh, Vic was doing with the pub. Let's go upstairs. I swore I'd never drink in your company again, Arthur. Me neither. As far as I'm concerned, you're responsible for me being booted out of a place that I regard as my second home. Winchester's more like my first home. Look, for the last time, it's our attack you've got to blame for this debacle, not me. Besides, I've already pledged a considerable cash sum towards repairs. Look, all these recriminations are getting us nowhere. At last, the voice of reason. What we should be doing is thinking of ways to raise the necessary to get the Winchester open again. Oh, we'll bung into your whip, man. Listen to that. Must do your art good to hear you're held in such esteem, Dave. Very kindly, you, Barry. Look, bunging fibres into a hat is not going to solve our problem. We've got to think on a much bigger scale. Why don't you arrange some sort of fundraising event? Oh, yeah. What about a marathon? <laughs> All right, a parachute jump. Will you be sensible? They had a charity bash down at the football club a couple of weeks ago. My old man won a fondue. Yes, it be. We can organise a Winchester 11 and have a football match. Look, maybe I'm short-sighted, Raymond, but how are we going to raise money by chucking four coats on the ground and kicking a ball about? No, it'd be a benefit match like the testimonials they have at the Arsenal, where we can charge the punters an entrance fee, all the proceeds go to Winchester. Yeah, but uh, who are we going to play? How about West Ham? Leave it out. How about the old bill? Are you mad? No, oh, Arthur, it's brilliant. Well, think about it. There's a load of people to pay to see a team from the Winchester meet the coppers head on. That's right. You can count me in. There's a couple of uniforms I wouldn't mind meeting in the tackle, eh? Hey, and there's no need to worry about kit. I turned over a sports warehouse last week. My kitchen's carrying more stock than Lily White's at the minute. A bit louder, George. I don't think Scotland Yard heard that. Uh, yeah, I do think you'll be a bit dodgy, you know, playing the Lord dressed in knocked off clobber. You can have a charity auction after the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I saw one of them at a boxing do. Raised a pile of bread. Mind you, they did have Samantha Fox as the auctioneer is. Well, that's no problem. We can get a celebrity in to do ours. Yeah, Monty Fish is the man you want for that. He got an East Ender, Ronnie Dyson, to open one of his dress shops. Right, we'll leave that to you then, Arthur, yeah? All I can say is thanks very much, everyone. Let's have another drink. Yeah. I reckon under the circumstances, it's Arthur's round. Here he is. All right, bang it on my slate. Arthur, you ain't got a slate here. Oh. 
not for daily getting in around for cash. It's almost worth having the winch to close just to see that. <laughs> Overtime, are we thought? Well, somebody's got to do it. If it was left to you, the only place you'd find a villain would be in a pub. I've put away more villains than you'll ever meet. Phone. There's a trouble with these flyers from Endon. They're out of touch. Thought. Well, I've got something you might be interested in. Look, I'm gonna go. No, not yet, Glow. Here, Arthur. Any about time you were off? No, it's only 11 o'clock. Much too early. I'll go home now. Her indoors will think I'm ill. Doesn't she worry where you are? We got over all that nonsense years ago. You know, it's true what they say. You never miss your water till the well runs dry. I was completely at a loss tonight without the Winchester. And Vic's place is no substitute. I mean, I've got enough money worries without having to pay for the drinks. No, it's much cheaper here, eh? Look, Arthur, I don't want to be rude, but I'd like a little bit of time to myself. With Gloria, that is. Well, don't worry about me, Ray. I won't get in the way. Good afternoon, my dear. Is uh, Monty about? Yes, do you have an appointment with Mr. Fish? Tell him it's Arthur Daly. He'll fit me in. Isn't that, isn't, isn't that the, um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the geezer in the bleach advert? Yes. He looks taller on the telly. So what do you reckon? Any chance of your mob putting out a team? Well, come on. Yeah. I wouldn't mind. It'd be a bit of a laugh. But I can't see you know who being too can. He gets a bit irrational when it comes to anything to do with Uncle Arthur. Young Daly. What have you been arrested for? Nothing. I just come to ask a favour. A favour? I'm a police officer, Raymond, not a social worker. They're having a football match in aid of the Winchester. And they wanted us to put up a team to play them. You seriously expect us to play soccer with the people you associate with? I'll get the message. Forget it. Uh, no, no, we'll do that. Are you serious? Certainly. A nice one. See you on a pitch. Community relations thought. Take the weight off. Now, what do you think of this, Arthur? Isn't she something? How are you, Monty? Oh, making a crust. Yourself? Yes. Much the same. 
Now isn't she a little darling? Great. Oh, no, no, uh, it's a bit too early for me. I, uh, I wouldn't say no to one of your lardies. Oh, certainly. Oh. Right. Well, what can I do you for? Well, I don't know whether you are aware of the plight of the Winchester Club at present. Yes, I am. It's a tragedy. Yeah. I hope that little Herbert that knocked that wall down is going to get his just desserts. Oh, he will. He will. The moment his boat is sighted, he will get a copious slapping. Whatever made Dave employ such a prat? Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, in order to raise some money, we are going to hold a benefit football match and a charity auction. And we thought if we got a well-known face to do the kickoff, play the auctioneer, and make himself generally available to Joe Public for autographs and so forth, it would boost the crowds. Oh, good idea. Did you have a particular celebrity in mind? Well, we want someone who's a draw, you know, someone with a uh, certain amount of gravity. I was thinking in terms of uh, Brucey or uh, Tarby, that area. Well, it's possible I could get you someone like that, but mind you, their fees are a bit steep. Ah, uh, I, I don't think I've made myself clear, Monty. You see, being a fundraising event, we were wondering if they'd be prepared to um, waive their fee and do the whole thing for gratis. <laughs> well, I mean, it does have showbiz connections. I can remember dear old Dickie Valentine doing a turn there in the 60s, and they get a very big splash from a local rag and gratitude from the local community. Yes, but with the best will in the world, Arthur, you can hardly call the Winchester Drinking Club a worthy cause. Look, I can do you a minor soap star for 200. An ex soap star comes even cheaper. Hey, what about your lad who does the, uh, the bleach advert? Would he be interested? Chaps, we've got a... What's up with everyone? There's been a bit of a problem on the manor. George has been nicked. Oh, you're joking. Well, that's his worry. We're up to here with problems of our own. Did you get hold of the celebrity, Arthur? No, I didn't. But did you try? Yes. Even Lionel didn't want to know, and he'd turn out for the opening of an envelope. And I thank you not to give me aggravation at a time like this. You're right. Never mind. Morley's agreed to put a team up, so we should still get a decent turnout. Yeah, but without a celebrity, we can't charge much more than a fiver. I mean, the best, we're only going to make a couple of grand. It's a bit short of 11,000, isn't it? Well, what about the charity auction? Donations are coming in very slowly, Ray. It's because Arthur's involved. Everyone thinks it's some sort of fiddle. I'm very wounded at everyone's attitude towards me in this matter. So, any change? Know what that round cost? Fix charging what he likes. It grieves me to see the profits from all our regulars going into Vic's coffers instead of the Winchesters. Well, they're not, are they, Arthur? And that is why I am looking for a job. Don't you worry, Dave. I'll find something for you. No, thanks, Arthur. Here, Dave. You know what's happened now? Yeah. Sammy Booth's been nicked. But what for? Nobody knows. He reckons he was fitted up. Well, that's the fourth this week, yeah. We'll be lucky if we have a team. Even Morley wouldn't be nicking people just to nobble to Winchester, would he? Why don't you ask him? Right. Your governor's been a bit free with the charges this week, hasn't he? That's well, nothing to do with us. I just hope you're putting up some sort of opposition daily. Remember, you talked me into this. Come on. Are you sure I can't persuade you to stay and watch the match, Padre? Uh, no, Arthur, I really ought to be going, thank you. Sunday is my rush day, you know. Yes, of course. Oh, and uh, thanks again for the eye of the ground. Are you sure you won't accept a fee? Certainly not. It's a pleasure to help. Winchester's always been one of my favourite cathedrals. Goodbye. Goodbye, Vicar. Thanks, Vicar. Don't seem right somehow, Arthur. Colin the clergy. He's the one who married me and her indoors. I prefer to think of it as settling an old score. Right, time for the team talk. Give the boys a bit of encouragement. Right. Okay, now listen, it's all down to us now, lads. So no clowning about and keep the ball in a move, yeah? Now, look, if we could just put the brake on the banter for a minute or two, I'd like to say a few words. Now, settle down, boys, settle down. Now, first off, tactics. I've examined all the options, kick and run, sweep them up and under, 
and the long balls. And I've come down in favour of total football. I want us to echo the great Brazilian teams of the past with our flowing thoughts and our dazzling legwork. Right, well, that's it, Arthur. Is that clear? Crystal, come on, let's get you. And I also want you to consider why we are here. To work one up Morley and his mob, right? No, Barry, something far more important than that. The fate of the Winchester club is in your hands. I want you to go out there and inspire them fans to put their hands deep in their pockets and buy them charity souvenirs. And remember the words of England's greatest leader. Gary Lineker. Winston Churchill. <laughs> I have nothing to give but blood, toil, sweat, and, and, and sweat. Never on the football field of human conflict. I always that. I'm trying to motivate people here. What are you... What? All right, Arthur. Do you realise the aggravation you have caused? I mean, I am likely to lose the Winchester. I am not a violent man, but I'm quite happy to make an exception. Just calm between... down, Arthur. Just calm down. Arthur, Dave. I'm sick about what happened, honest, but I can make it up to you. Impossible. This is yours. What is it? Money. What money? I ain't had time to count it. I come straight here after I've done Vic's place over. Are you completely mental? There's enough old Bill out there to sing the Hallelujah Chorus, and you turn up with a bag full of stolen reddies. I'm sorry, Arthur. I thought I'd get me own back on Vic and pay you back at the same time, see? It's only his grass money. Ray, tell me this is a nightmare. Uh, uh, attack. Did you say that this was Vic's grass money? I ain't seen him for years till he come in your drinker. Slick Vic, the policeman's pal. It was him that got me sent down last time. He must have put the finger on George and the others. Well, in those circumstances, I don't mind accepting a few extra fibres for the Winchester Fund. How much was there in the till? Not a lot, Arthur. But there was ten grand in the safe. Oh, my God! How do you think we're going to hang on to this? I thought you knew about laundering, Arthur. Laundering? You need to know about conjuring to make this disappear? Yeah, but, uh, Arthur, this will be the answer to our prayers. I mean, I don't suppose that auction's going to be worth a lot. It'll be worth more than you think, Dave. If I could get glory, I'd tell the boys to work. Am I interrupting something? No, at all, Mr Morgan. No, no. Just discussing tactics in privacy. Can't be too careful. You know what policemen are like. Oh, well, don't mind me. I'm completely impartial, of course. I didn't realise you were actually playing. Me? Oh, oh no, no, no. I'm, I'm just here in an executive capacity. Oh, good. Only one of the linesmen needs some kit. Oh, attack! Get changed. Move. Our midfield dynamo. Four. How very unfortunate. No, you're right. You can't go to the police in the normal way, can you? Let me explain something to you, Vic. To me, you're just a useful service, like a plumber. You mend the pipes, I pay the bills. You drop the money down a drain, not my problem. Well, I suggest you do what you always do. Keep your ear to the keyhole. That bulge in your sock is nothing more dangerous than a shin pad. That's all they are, Mr. Morley. Phil? Heads. Yeah, we'll have to kick off. We'll stay as we are. Uh, Phil, can I have my coin back? Oh, sorry about that, Sarge. Ref, ref, all right if I comes on. One of my players needs treatment. 
Why? What's wrong with him? Well, he says it's crap. How can he have? We haven't even kicked off yet. He had to run down the off license before the game left a fair step. Well, treat him off the pitch. I want to get on. Come on, Winchester. I think I prefer football. End up again. I just want a little word, sweetheart. You know what a little word you'll get? Come on, darling. You'll always let a man in, won't you? Of course I will. Did you bring one with you? Listen, I've been done over. If it was him, I'll make him sorry. I'll tell him. If I see him. Gonna move your foot. I'll find him, you know. Ah, God, bitch! Right. 
Ya, aku tak sangat dispasa. Well, I had a brilliant week with Arthur. It wasn't safe to leave it in the dressing room. It's safer out here. I'll have to get rid of it. We didn't have time yet. Come on, keep on your feet. Just keep playing your natural game and expressing yourself. Two one down. And they ain't even rubbing sweat yet. We've got to start getting it tight at the back and hit them on the break. Yeah, that's right, right. game, Mr Morley. Oh, well, that's it, then. Match abandoned. <laughs> Tragic, Vic, eh? Oh, of course. You never knew him, did you? Feelings, Field? No, Sarge. I mean, what's the sending off compared with the Colin Ray? Oh, it's a pity about that, isn't it? I was enjoying myself. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll bring good tidings. I have just come from Art Alan's bedside, where he's making a good recovery in the arms of his loving wife, Angie. Yeah. He sends his best and says any contribution he has made to save the Winchester Fund was well worth the effort. Yeah. So, charge your glasses and let the auction commence, right? Got one in your oh, can't they? Ladies, gentlemen, and my uncle Arthur. <laughs> As you know, this auction's on behalf of an institution we all hold dear, the Winchester Club. Yeah. And for a man we both like and admire, ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you Dave. <laughs> So, I hope you're all in a very generous mood tonight. Now, lot number one has been donated by my very own mother and is an ornament in the shape of a Spanish dancer. I think the missus will go for that. Yeah, looks quite attractive, Sarge. So, who'll start the bidding? Ten pounds. Seeing is believing, ladies and gentlemen, a ten pound bid from Detective Sergeant Morley. Two hundred and fifty. Two fifty from the back. I'll bid three hundred. Three hundred at the front. That's ridiculous. Four hundred and fifty. Yeah. Four fifty at the back. Four fifty. Four fifty. Going. Knocked out a peewee for four hundred and fifty quid, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 
Now, lot number two has been donated by yet another member of my family. No prizes for guessing who. And is half a dozen cases of a lovely little wine, nice little tipple, the Chateau Winchester. Now, I can guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, this is a genuine daily limited edition. You've only got another 50 cases back at the lockup. <laughs> that boy is seriously lacking respect for me. So, who'll start a bid in on this one? 250 quid. 250 quid a pee. 300. 300 to the charming young lady in the middle there. 400. 400. Thank you, sir. 400. Uh, you know, Arthur, at this rate, I reckon we will raise 10 grand. 10,355 pounds at least, Dave. 800 pounds from there. 800. Going once, <laughs> twice, sold to Lenny Orthon for 800 subs, ladies and gentlemen. Something very suspicious going on here. Oh, don't be so cynical, Mr Morley. What you are witnessing is a genuine outpouring of affection for the Winchester Club. Right, ladies and gentlemen, Gloria, next item, please. Lot number three, and I'm sure you'll all be very pleased about this, is a copper's helmet. Two bob. <laughs> this was the very copper's helmet found outside the Winchester in 1975 that was involved in the Wilsdon Market Traders Punch-Up and donated today by Harry the At Hawkins. Nice one, Harold. What do I hear? Leaving so soon, Vic. Arthur. I want to show you something before you go, yeah? Look. Amazing, isn't it? What is? Grass, Vic. Grass. Springs up in the most unexpected places. See all them brown patches out there? That's where it got trodden on by big heavy boots. It never seems to come back after that. It won't happen again. Trust me, Arthur. I trust you, Vic. I trust you to get off this manor for good tonight, before I put word around about you and your little sideline. For my pub? I'm skinned. Dave will take over the Atten Feathers until the Winchester's repaired. You bloody planned this, didn't you? Me? Now, the next lot, ladies and gentlemen, is the first of our novelty items. It's the thruppany bit that Dave retrieved from Barbara Winters Cleavage when she visited the club in 1969. <laughs> Do I hear 500? 